This is the month of the triumph of faith. The triumph of what? Faith. I pray that today, God's word will bless you in the name of Jesus. So we look at faith for abundance, part three. Faith for abundance, part three. Abundance is having enough divine provision to meet your needs and the genuine needs of others. Abundance is having enough divine provision to meet your needs and the needs of genuine needs of others. God wants you to prosper and succeed. He said, I wish above all things that I may as prosper and be held even as your soul prosper. I told John too. But here is a well, God wants you to prosper. But in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. It said, this book of the law shall not depart out of the mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have what? Good success. So you decide the success, prosperity, and miracles of your own life. I repeat, you decide the success, prosperity and miracles of your life. You are the one who decide them. This book of the law shall not depart. So your miracles are not decided by God. You decide when the miracles should happen. You decide when you should succeed. You decide when you prosper. So here. You decide it. You do what? Decide it. And in this service, I want to teach you seven ways to enjoy abundance. Seven ways to enjoy what? Many just think that giving, giving, giving is it. No, 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 it's beyond that. Seven ways that you can enjoy abundance. How many of you like abundance? How many of you like scarcity? Even as nada is scarce, do you like it? Do you like to beg? How many of you like begging? How many of you like to be poor? You like it? Okay, if you don't like it, then listen well. Seven ways to enjoy what? Number one, be teachable. Be what? Teachable. If you want abundance, be teachable. Learning is a choice. You can't change with an unteachable spirit. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6. He said they've gone into captivity, Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Their honorable men are famished for lack of what? Knowledge. You shall know the truth, John 8, 32, and the truth shall what? Set you free. So if you want to prosper, search for what you don't know. Search for what you want? You don't know. Proverbs 1, 5. Shall we read together? One, five, one to go. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Proverbs 2, 3 to 5. Shall we read together? Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge of God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You know the reason? I was poor. I was what? Poor. And I told myself, don't deceive yourself. Guy, you are begging, you are broke. So with a teachable spirit, I picked up Graham Copeland's book, Gospel Prosperity, and my mentor's book, Breaking Financial Hardship. And I sat with the word of God with a teachable spirit that I don't know it. I never read those books with the intention that I want to just get information. I went to transformation because I, if I knew, I wouldn't beg. Are you get what I'm saying now? So I said, Lord, teach me that which I know not. For me to be using style to beg means I don't know it. Don't say you know something and then you are pretending. That you know yourself. Can I say something? Be teachable enough for what you don't know. 
Don't say you know what you don't know. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I knew I never knew prosperity. I was teaching prosperity, but I didn't get the depth of it. So I told myself, hey, go and find out the truth. Accept the truth and change. Accept what? Stop giving excuses for your failures. You know, when people fail, they keep giving excuses. Stop giving excuses for your failures. Accept the truth and be teachable enough to say, hey, I don't know this thing. If you're failing in life, you don't know it. It's right here. And age does not bring change. Ask me why. If you fail school start when you are 16, if you get to 80, will you now have school start? You failed it. You write the exam. They won't say because of your age now we give you school start. Age does not bring change. If you don't know it, you don't know it. Now, for instance, you should know that abundance starts with love. Starts with what? That's the fact. I'm joking on this side. Starts with love. If you don't love God, you can't enjoy what? Abundance. Because thou shalt love the Lord that God with other heart, with other soul, with other mind. For this is the first commandment. So if I don't keep that first commandment, there cannot be a commander of wealth. And Solomon love the Lord. Then God gave me abundance. Verse 6, 3, 3 to 4, then 13. God gave me abundance. And David had affection over the house of his God. First Chronicles Chronicle chapter 29, 3 to 5. So if I don't love God, for instance, I know that there's no way I will prosper. So I should be teachable to know that the foundation of a world is what? Love. Exactly, sir. I have to love God for me to prosper. Are you getting what I'm saying? But if I'm not teachable, I say, I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it. No, no, you don't know it. If you're begging, you don't know. Listen, let me say this to you. You are not prosperous if what you're getting is not from you. You are not prosperous if what you're getting is not what? No. You don't know prosperity if somebody is giving to you. No. Prosperity is when you're able to generate it yourself. Yes, favor can come. I don't mean favor. I'm talking about you being able to generate your own wealth. Is that clear, sir? So don't say you know what you don't know. It's not just giving. Prosperity is deeper than giving. I've seen people give. Yes, that's the anchor, last leg, like relay. But that's not all about prosperity. Is that clear, sir? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you must know. You must what? must know. Is, are you going through pressure? Then you don't know it. You don't what? No, are you going through some, some financial pressure? Then you don't know it. Two. Follow God's way and not the way of the world. Follow what? If you want to prosper, follow God's way and not the way of the world. Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody come unto the Father. I said what? By me. John 14, verse 6. The truth is the word of God. John 17, 17. It's to sanctify them through the truth. The truth is the word of God. So follow the word of God. I is the word of God. In Deuteronomy 8, 18, it's a me that give the word power to get well, that he may establish the covenant with thee, which they establish unto their fathers as it is this day. So prosperity is simply practical application of the covenant, not praying and fasting. So I must understand that the way of prosperity in the kingdom is by operating the covenant, not fasting and prayer, not by anybody helping me. Is that true? So I hear. So as long as this eight-minute system and what? Have it. I must follow God's own pattern, not the way of the world. In the world, you have to scheme, you have to lie, you have to cheat, you have to blackmail, you have to frame people to get money. But the kingdom is not like that. So I must follow God's way. In the world, you have to do things you're not supposed to to do, so I must follow the way of God. Number three, develop your God-given talents and abilities. Develop your God-given what? Talents and abilities if you want to prosper. In Matthew 25, verse 15, shall we read together one to go? And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability and strength with So every man is gifted. There's no ungifted person in the kingdom of God. Read that scripture. What you do is this. Improve, invest time on your abilities and gifts. Invest time to improve on your abilities and what? For instance, you like to so play with cars, you have a skill of being a mechanic, you not know, mechanic of Nigeria where they spoil cars. 
You are somebody who you like to talk. And every time you talk, people are held spellbound. If you know you're a motivational speaker, there's something in you. Is that clear? There's somebody when you write, people are held bound reading your books. You're a writer. I'm not giving an instance. Everybody has something that he or she has. Are you getting me? Whatever is in you is what will generate your financial success. Everybody has something inside of you that will generate your financial what? Success. Now let me read this to you. Romans chapter 12 verse 6. Shall we read the A part together? Having then gifts, different according to the grace that is given to us. Everybody has a gift that makes you different from another person. Don't try to admire somebody else. Listen, listen, listen. You want to prosper? Don't look at somebody. Look at the gift you have. It is that gift you develop. Now listen again. <laughs> listen again. Everybody in the kingdom is gifted. Identify that gift and develop it. And do what? Develop it. Our problem is we look at somebody else and want to be like somebody else. Bring that scripture back again. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. So each person has something he or she has. Paul was not like Peter. Peter was not like James. Peter was boldness. John was love. James was wisdom. Each one stood somewhere. Are you getting me? Are you hearing me? There's something in you. Messi is football. Jordan is basketball. If Messi goes to play basketball, you'll be a misfit. See his height. Yes, there's money in basketball, but he, he had a gift of the run leather through with leg. Drama had a gift of run leather with hands. There's something in you, especially in the kingdom of God, that that is where your prosperity is. There are some of you, when you write in the office, even your MD will say, excuse me, you wrote this? That is where your gift is. Every time your MD wants to write, make sure you improve on writing. There are some more you go to a meeting, the way they talk, the MD will be spellbound when they're talking. Don't try to be like him. Develop your writing. Let him do the talking. Anytime they want to write, they'll look for you. Anytime they want to, there's somebody to talk, they'll look for him. But we don't develop the gift in us. We try to look at somebody else. So our prosperity is limited. So here. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I was preaching in a big church and a great woman of God, highly respected, where I respect someone, said, David, you redefine, you just stand in one place with simplicity and preach, and we are so, everybody's wrapped. So you make preaching look simple. That's my own area. I didn't shout, I didn't, I don't shout when I'm preaching, I don't, ah, yeah, 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 that's not my area. I develop myself. I talk slowly, but I'm putting it sim. It's entering you sim. I'm inoculating you sim. I don't shout. I cannot say that I will leave my pattern to be like somebody else. Rather, I develop myself in how to improve on what I have. When I preach, I can stand one place and hear you. But some people, they preach, you carry it on your head. That's the man's area. I can't be like that person. I can't say I want to be like that person. Some people, they talk. Hey, somebody shout, yeah. I say, yeah. I say, yeah. They take towel, clean their face. They say, yeah. Now, I can't do that. I'm not used to getting towel to clean face. That's not my area. But that's my area. Everybody likes him in that area. When he shouts, yeah, yeah. He takes towel. You know, they take towel, not handkerchief. Towel, do like this. Somebody shout, yeah. I say, yeah. That is the man's area. Me, I develop myself. Now, so all I need to do is to develop to talk calmly, and then it enters you like inoculation. <laughs> what is your own? There is no ungifted person. Your prosperity is in identifying that gift and improve it. Develop the gift. So here. A man's gift make room for him and bring it him before great men. So here. A man, Proverbs. A man's gift. A man's what? 
So there's something in you that will bring you to the world. May you identify it. Yes. Proverbs 18 verse 16. Then number four. I'm talking about how you prosper. Be focused. Be what? Be focused. That is be committed. Be focused simply means be what? Be committed. Matthew 6.22 The light of the body is the, is the eye and if therefore the eye be single the whole body shall be full of light. Anything you're doing, focus on that thing. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. James 1 8, Matthew 6 22. That's the first one I quoted. Be committed to your assignment if you don't want to look like a man in an asylum. Focus eliminates distraction. It does not allow certain attractions to affect you. Commitment attracts people. Brings opportunities and gives you power for creativity. I said commitment attracts what? When you are committed to your work, you attract people. Meet a tailor, a designer who is committed. Everybody wants to go there. It brings opportunity. It brings what? And gives you power for creativity. Because when you are committed, your mind will be working very fast. Say here. Be committed to God and your assignment on the earth. Be committed to who? God and your assignment on earth. Solve problems with excitement. Solve problems with believe in excellence. You will just be there. You prosper when others are struggling. Say here. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Glory to God. Number five. Be a giver and a talk of prosperity. Be a giver and a talk of what? Prosperity. Now, I don't want to copy notes. Look at where you missed it. There must be somewhere you missed it. Because some of you, you miss some two, three. Some of you miss only one. Some of you miss all. When messages are taught like this, don't just say, I'm copying, I'm copying. Look at yourself. I, I see that my talent is not what I've developed. Because some of you, you, you know all the principles, but you have not developed your talent. Is that true, sir? So you say, okay, this way I missed it. I missed it in not developing my talent and gift that God gave to me. Some of you, where you have missed it is simply... And not serious with what God has given to you. You have this uh, very lousy attitude towards what God has given to you. Is that clear? You are not serious in your own assignment. You go to work late. Monday to night, you are just sleeping. No. So that's somewhere you missed it. Is that clear, sir? Some people, they're very lazy. They're very what? Very for promise laziness. Absolute laziness. They sleep Monday to night. They get up very late and say, hmm, I want to more. That's a young man expecting something from his uncle without him walking. Number five, be a giver and a what? A talk of prosperity. As long as this earth remained, seed time and harvest shall not what? Genesis 8.22. If you want it to cease, then you will cease. But as long as this earth remains, you must be a giver, otherwise you won't prosper. You won't what? Luke 6.38, give and it shall be given Unto you. If you don't give, nothing will be given unto you. Simple. Everywhere you see given, a seed must be sown before the harvest can come. So here. Yes, you're a giver, also be a what? A talker. Proverbs 12, verse 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. So after you have given, be a what? A talker of prosperity. Proverbs 13, verse 2. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. Your words are what will decide your harvest. After you have given, make sure your words are in line with what you want. Yes, you give offerings, attend church, do good things, but if you speak the wrong thing, then you destroy your harvest. You do everything good, you come to church, you are dedicated, but if you say the wrong word, it will cancel all your giving. Because Proverbs chapter 18, 20 to the 1. A man's belly shall be satisfied by the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be what? Filled. But life and death are in the power of what? The thong. I did that love it, shall eat the fruit of it. He refuse to speak poverty and expect to be rich. If you speak poverty, you'll be poor. You shall have whatsoever you say. Mark 11 to 3. Don't talk poverty and expect to enjoy plenty. 
inside here. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Which way did you miss your own? Some of you, you are not teachable. You are not what? Before somebody will talk, he said, I know it. If you know it, you won't be where you are. And, now listen, can I say this with all humility? If you're depending on somebody, you don't know it. I depend on no mortal man. Not even you who is a member of the church. If you're depending on somebody to help you, you don't know it. So be teachable enough to say, Lord, what is the secret? If you're begging to pay transport, you don't know it. So be teachable enough to say, Lord, why do I miss it? Are you hearing me now? Tell yourself through, I don't know this and this. You know why? The worst form of deceit is self-deceit. Is what? It's more deadly than the devil. People think that the devil is one. the most dangerous thing is self deceit. Where you deceive your own self. Now listen. Let me tell you something, my own story. I won't tell you somebody's story. I read about prosperity. I was taught about Yedipo prosperity. I know about prosperity. I was teaching prosperity already. Then coming to Port Harcourt, God told me you go to Port Harcourt, GRA Port Harcourt. I knew that already from God's divine direction. Now, to come to Port Harcourt was tough. Was what? Very tough. I didn't get the money to come. It was not available. I've gone to Bible school. I've finished Bible school. I, I was teaching already gift tide. I was already teaching churches. Remember me talk? Then I went to a man who I prayed for and became rich. And I went to him. We are talking. I said, I sit on the man, an Igbo man. And we are talking. Then I said, you know, this brother God. <sighs> it's just that if the money come, I would have gone. He said, Pastor, it's true. Me, sir, I know that you have to leave. The contract I did, they've not paid me. Now, if they are paid, I would have just given you the money now. Then something in me jumped. I said, if you know it, you know through truth you are soliciting. I said, inside me, I said, you know what you're doing, you are soliciting. You are using style to tell him to give you. So you don't know it. Don't deceive yourself, you don't know it. I told myself through that I don't know it. That's how I went back to read the book. I say, hey, this thing I'm doing, it shows I don't know it. Let me not deceive myself. Nobody was there, only me and God. I said, I don't know it. So I went back, 1997, after I finished Bible school, 1996, sat down with the teacher who said, Lord, if I know I can't use style to beg, it was begging, no matter how you say it. The man too did not know I was begging. But me, I knew. And I sat down with the teacher and I said, God, show me what I don't know. There's no mortal man I can tell from that day. Say, please, no more. I know it to a point that nothing can make me beg anybody stylishly. No way. Not now. Even then. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I'm not teachable. I'll still be deceiving myself. I say, no, prosperity is just given. It shall be given unto you. I pay tithe. I give offering. And I know God is going to prosper me. <laughs> Don't you beg stylishly. So you don't know it yet. So here. Mm? Because if you know, you won't beg. Find me transport, I beg. Now I know the bank. You don't know it. You don't know it. You are just you say, I know I went to a bank five hours. No, no. You don't know it. Because if you know you, there must be a way out. My children, you know, the school fees. If not for the school fees, everything's okay. But you know, you know the economy now, you don't know it. Mm? Glory to God. Number six. Walk in financial integrity. Walk in what? Financial integrity. Walk in financial integrity if you want to prosper. Refuse to be crooked. Financial faithfulness is the bedrock for abundance. Crookedness makes destiny crooked. When you're financially crooked, it will destroy you. Destroy Gehazi and, and Judas. It won't destroy you. It will not destroy you. 
Stop playing games with God and man. Stop playing games. In Proverbs 11 verse 3, the integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Don't do like this with people. When they give you money, don't tell them stories. If they trust you and over money to you for something, execute it. Don't come back with stories. It's right here. Do you want to prosper? If men can trust you, they don't have problem giving to you. I was talking to a young man. I said, do you know how you can succeed in your business? We sat down and I said, look, many are in this industry, but the thieves want somebody who will not steal from them because no thief wants another one to thief. Permit me to put it that way. Every thief wants somebody he can trust. That's why Potiphar, a non-believer, could hand over his word to Joseph. He felt Joseph would never steal from him. Every thief wants who he will not thief from him. No thief trusts another thief. That's why when arm robbers they rob, they and then they say shite. <laughs> because arm robbers don't, anything they rob, they don't go say after. They don't trust themselves, they say shite now. Because every thief knows that another thief can thief from the thief. <laughs> so when he say, oh, I don't have job. It's, we don't have a job crisis, we have integrity crisis. Today, if you're an accountant in this church and you have no job, you have integrity problem. Ask me why. Hmm? To be an accountant and not have job, you have integrity problem because every organization wants accountants who they can trust. But you know today, only 2% of accountants can be trusted all over Nigeria. The poor do fraud more accountants. But today, there are some who, are very integ who have integrity. I've worked with some who have absolute impeccable integrity work with me. But some are also very funny. So when a Christian can be trusted, the unbelievers will hand over their money to you. If they can trust you, your boss may think he's joking. If he gives you five naira, bring back the change. Let him be the one to tell you take it. Don't say my boss doesn't care when I tell him. He knows. As busy as you think I am, I am not careless. So. When I give money, I will just watch your attitude. When you work with me, the first thing I test you with is money. That's my, my principle. I'll throw money to you, throw money to you, throw money to you, throw money to you, throw money to money, money, money. See how you spend it. If you spend any house, okay, this person cannot be trusted with money. So don't think the rich, they are foolish. Every rich man is very strict with money. You know the reason? They worked for it. That's why the way rich people spend is not the way those who take from them spend. Work in financial worth, integrity. Psalm 112, verse 3, 1 and 3. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly his commandment. Wealth and rich shall be what? His house. And his righteousness in your head forever. Avoid financial corruption. Be faithful to God and men. Proverbs 28, verse 20. A faithful man shall abound with wealth, but he that maketh his to be rich shall not be innocent. Don't go crooked, otherwise your destiny will be crooked. Have the fear of God. Be content at every level you are. Don't live your life too much. Contentment is what? Many of us, this is why we're not faithful, so we're not content. We're always trying to live big. In the process, we put hand here, put hand here, put hand here, put hand here. Live at your size part time. Don't live an oversized life. Are you getting me now? If God gives you a beetle, use the beetle at that level. When you move to Pujo, he will bless you. Don't say I must buy a car. When you don't have the money, you do things you're not supposed to do. So here. He said, let your light so shine. Then you may see your good one glorify for that which is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me for I wait on thee. Psalm 25, verse 21. I pray that integrity will change your story. I didn't finish that testimony. When I told the young man integrity, the young man is one of the fastest growing people in the financial industry. I said, all the thieves want is to trust you. If they can trust you, they'll hand over to you. So here. Are you getting what I'm saying now? If your problem is money, then the earlier you kill it, the better. Don't collect money and then story come out of the money. If Christians who have integrity will have no job problem. Because every sinner, like somebody can trust. Every sinner. There are people I can leave my millions with and I will never be afraid. And there are people if I live 10,000 with, I'll be afraid. I tell our accountants, I say, listen, 
I don't care the icon you have. If you want to remain the can, it's your business. If you like have icon, ACCA, we are not after all those certificates. We are after. First qualification of an accountant is integrity. Second qualification, integrity. Third qualification, integrity. If you're an accountant, you lack integrity, you are not supposed to be an accountant. If a security man should steal, you know why they punish them? He's supposed to protect. Now he's among the thieves. An accountant is financial security officer. So if that man becomes a member of the fraud, deal with him because that's the man who's supposed to protect your finance from being invaded. Now for him to be part of the corruption, he lacks what? Integrity. I've worked with an accountant who would never touch dime, even if they are perishing. And some, they skim you, they dribble you upside down. Because you don't know it. You no know accountant to be fraudulent is very dangerous. They know how to use pencil and also use eraser. <laughs> is their, that is their job. But the ones who have integrity will say, no way, if I perish, I perish. I will never... St-. And don't walk in a place where tomorrow you cannot go back to. You know, if you have integrity, you can walk back to the place very tall. But if you lack integrity, when you say, don't mind, when it was there, thief. Thief. If you go to a place where you go, there are some governors who will live today. Nobody will greet them. There are some presidents who will live today. You will, know, look, you will know whether you're popular after you leave office. And the secret is integrity. It's what? Ah, there are people who leave office today as they are living. Everybody will say, bye-bye. And there are some who will leave when they pass. They say, hey! It's excellency. Integrity is the watchword. Are you hearing me? Don't do something that tomorrow people will bow their face when they see you. They say, that man, he finished our company. He killed our company. All, everybody here, they done that. This guy was the one who killed it. Is that a good testimony? Okay. It's after you leave your office, they can lift your hand and say, that man, when he was there, he was not part of us. We used to do deal. He would tell us, don't do deal. But you, Christian, now you even tell us, about when you go do the deal, deal like this, deal like this, deal like this, deal like this, deal like this. Eh? Collect the money, cancel the paper. Tear the paper. We set the place a place. <laughs> a child. Oh, God. Nah. What shall it profit a man? You can't say, well, life is not all about money. Don't live your life without having posterity in view. Integrity is what preserves your posterity. Prosperity without posterity is poverty without knowing. Don't just have money. Also have a name to protect the money. Finally, number seven. How many are blessed right now? Blessed. Keep giving continually. Keep giving what? Wherever giving stops, that's where prosperity will stop. As long as this eight minutes, sit time and have it shall not cease. Pay correct tithe always and correctly pay your offering. Tithe is 10% of your income back to God. He said, James, I read quoted Genesis 8.22, and James 1.25, but also look into the perfect law of liberty and continued what? Daring. He being not a forgetful hearer, but the doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So, keep giving. Keep what? Keep giving. Have faith in God that cannot lie to bless you. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Number 23, verse 19. Um, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Keep giving and believe God. God will change your story. That no matter what the hardship is in the world, He will change your story. Remember, He's a covenant keeping God. He said, My covenant will not bring no God, no other that which has gone out of my lips. Psalm 89, verse 34. So if God says He will bless you, then He will bless you. Don't have fear. Just believe that if you give, God will give it back to you. Because as long as this earth is even it, sit down and have a shanot, cease. As long as you have seen the day and night, Jeremiah 33. 21, 22, 25. And I see it just so that when you do it, your God's part is eternally settled. That will give you and boost your faith. And the third of faith is that you will obey, you will act, and you will speak exactly what you believe. Those are the signs of man who have faith. Listen to me. Your future is great. What did I say? That's the seven things. Number one, be what? Teachable. Be what? Teachable. Number two, Follow God's ways. Number three, develop your talent. Develop your what? Stop looking somewhere. Stop looking at Messi. You have something. Is that true? I can never be Messi. I can never be Ronaldo. I'm a preacher. That's my word God has given to me. Messi can't do what I'm doing. If Messi is standing and hearing me, Messi will fold his hand like this and say, wow, is that how somebody can preach the Bible? Because he can't do what I'm doing. So I can't envy him. I have to develop my own place. So here, there's nothing that can make Messi carry do what I'm doing. 
So don't, don't look at someone and say, Check, I wish I would like this. You, develop your own. Is that clear? There's something you. Be focused. Be what? Be committed to that thing God has given to you. Be a giver and a talker. Walk in financial worth, integrity, and keep giving all the days of your life. Now, the prophetic with David Ibiomi. Lift your hands to heaven. Go with this new fire. Amen. Subdue and take over. Amen. No matter the challenges of life, God will give you a word. Amen. The same God will reveal the secret of the heart of men to me today. He will reveal secrets to you. Amen. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Arise and shine. Amen. To those who came sick, I pronounce you healed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.